Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today I'm going to be continuing with the NumPy tutorial series in Python by looking at how you can shape and reshape arrays. So as usual, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'm going to move you onto the screen. Okay, so we are in PyCharm and I have created a Python file called NumPy tutorial 5 and we are just going to be shaping and reshaping arrays today. And as usual, I've imported the relevant modules, so we need to import NumPy and we do this as NP, just so we can recall NumPy commands and do things with arrays using the package NumPy. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is shape of an array. Okay, so we're going to say array equals np.array and we're going to create a two-dimensional array. So we'll have one, two, three, and then let's say we want four, five, six and seven, eight, nine. Okay, now if we were to just print this array and we run this Python file up here, it prints the array like this. And remember, arrays don't have commas like lists do. That's kind of one of the main differences between arrays and lists is that arrays aren't separated by commas. Okay, so this is the array here. Now what we can do in Python is get Python to tell us exactly what shape the, this array is. So here you might see, well, we've got three different elements within this array and then within that element we have three numbers and obviously for larger data sets it's not going to be quite as small as <laughs> as this when you have really really big data sets um, and big arrays you kind of want to know straight away you know what what size am I dealing with what kind of commands can I do with the array that I have so the way that we figure out what shape of an array is is by saying print array dot shape very simply got a few things going on there print array dot shape and if we run this perfect we get three three so what that's saying is we have three elements which you can see here obviously they won't be separated by the commas in the actual array and then we have three elements within that element as it were so if i was to say okay let's add a a 10 into each of these make them you know four elements inside and we run this Notice that now it says we have three elements, but inside each of those elements we have four. And that's because I've added an extra element in here. So we have four in each of these elements. Okay, perfect. That's how we tell, you know, what kind of shape an array is. And that's really handy when you do go on to do a bit of data analysis and figuring out, you know, what kind of arrays you are dealing with when you have big data sets. So I'm just going to put a comment down here just to remind us. And I'll say this will print three, four because we have three elements, whoa, elements, there we go, um, and inside those elements we have four numbers, or you could say elements. It gets a little bit confusing when you deal with higher dimensional arrays because you have, you know, you'll have elements and then inside those elements you'll have more elements and it just kind of gets a little bit confusing. So we'll say four numbers and I'll just put in, in brackets elements. Okay, so what we're going to say now is, so I'll say notice what happens when we have different numbers of elements. So we'll create a new array, we'll call it array2 and we'll say np.array and we will have a two dimensional array again and we'll have maybe one, two, three, oh, two, three here and then we'll have four, five, six, seven. Now notice what's happened, we have two elements as can be seen here but within those elements we have a different number of numbers so if i was to say well let's print this array two and the shape and remember shape returns exactly how many elements there are, there are and how many elements are within those elements so we'll click run okay now we do get a little bit of an error and that's purely because we do have we have assigned arrays to you know we have different elements within this array and they have different lengths so ordinarily you would never really get a case where you have arrays that have elements with different numbers in you usually have some form of symmetry so that's why we do have, get a bit of an error here but it's just worth noting that you know say we have an array and we we have different numbers within the elements then it won't recall the number of elements so here it just returns two simply and that's because we have two elements and then inside those elements because the numbers don't match up here we have three numbers and here we have four it won't recall you know what kind of shape it is so that's something kind of just worth remembering is with different size kind of numbers in so here we have three and four then you kind of will come up with an error but also it won't return the, the shape command won't work fully because you have you know different size elements 
Okay, so that's just a little bit of a side. Now what we can do is we can actually take an array and reshape it. Now what you can do, and we're just going to write this here, we're going to say reshaping arrays. Now this is quite cool, this is kind of a nice little touch that, that NumPy has, is you can take an array and then you can completely reshape that array. So I'm just going to start by kind of considering an example, and I think this is quite a nice example to get your head around why you would reshape arrays, and also just how you do it in general. Okay, so let's start with an example, and we're going to say, let's suppose we have, we have an array of students' ages, students' ages, and we have three students of each age. So this is going to look something like this. We're going to say students equals np.array. Now it's going to be one dimensional and we're going to say, okay, let's have three students of age 19. We'll have three students of age 20 and we'll have three students of age 21. So this is kind of, you know, a way of just saying, well, this is the student's age. Here we go. And let's say we also have and let's say we also have their kind of average exam score over the year. Okay, so usually the way that it works is, you know, 18 and 19, you're in first year. So we'll pretend this is you know, first year students and we'll say this is second year students and we'll say this is third year students. So let's say we have their average exam score over the year and we'll call that exam score and we'll let that equal to an array, a one dimensional array again. And let's say we have in first year, we have 57, 60, 65 and then for second year students let's say we have 59 63 uh, let's say 70 and then for final year students let's say we have 65 72 and 75 so obviously immediately you can see that i've chosen values whereby the test score does increase and that's usually because in first year students don't take it as seriously because it doesn't count in the UK. Um, I can't say I did that but a lot of students don't really take it as seriously because first year doesn't count towards your overall classification. So you kind of tend to see that students actually do better as they go through the years because they've developed a kind of revision routine and stuff like that. So we've kind of made it an example whereby as you go through the years your grade gets better. So what we can do with these arrays is we can reshape them. So, you know, you're looking at this now and you're thinking, well, these here we know correspond to 19, these here correspond to 20, and these here correspond to 21. Is there a way of splitting this array so that we can reshape it and make it look like, okay, these were for 19, these were for 20, and these were, tw for and these were for 21. And we can actually, and we do that by using the reshape command in NumPy. So the way we do that is we say, we'll say here, splitting up the exam score, and what we'll say is we'll say exam split, we'll say exam score dot reshape. And what we want is we want to reshape it into three elements because we have three different, is that three? That's four. <laughs> we have, sorry, we have three different ages and within those ages we have three students. So we'll say we'll reshape it into three, three. Now if I was to just print exam split and we run this, Perfect, there we go. It has split it up into three different arrays. So, so this is now a two dimensional array and that's really, really nice because now we have split it up into, okay, well we know that these correspond, these here correspond to those of age 19, these here correspond to those of age 20 and these here correspond to those of age 21. So that's kind of a nice little way of understanding why we would, we would reshape arrays and also just a nice way of understanding how reshaping arrays works in general. There's something that we do need to mention with reshaping and that is we can't reshape every single array. Now the reason that this worked here is because if we take three multiplied by three we get nine and obviously in here we have nine elements. So what's worth remembering when you do reshape arrays if you were to take a reshape so we have two four in here if you multiply these two values next to each other and if they equal the number of elements within your array that you're manipulating, then it's okay. However, if I was to say now, okay, let's say exam split, and we'll take exam score again, and we're going to reshape it, but instead we're going to say, okay, let's reshape it so that we'll have two elements, and in those elements we'll have four elements. So ideally, kind of, that would produce 
the first four and then the next four but unfortunately because we have an extra one out here what you'll see is it doesn't work so if i say print exam split and obviously it's reassigning so let's just hashtag this out for a second and we'll run okay look we get a value error and it says cannot reshape array of size 9 into shape 2 4 and that is simply because what you need to do is when you whenever you reshape an array as i said these two values here when you multiply them together they must equal the number of elements you have so we know there are nine elements so therefore we can reshape this in any way such that nine is divisible by two numbers now unfortunately because nine is a, is quite a kind of a tricky it's an odd number we can only really say let's reshape it in terms of three three as here and we'll print that or here we'll call this exam split two you can reshape it so that you have one element you have one element and inside that element you have nine elements or similarly nine elements and inside that element you'll have one number so if we just run this now you'll see that here this final one here creates a two-dimensional array all the way up there and again it produces nine elements which can be seen by each of these here and inside those elements we just have one and that's obviously what you see here so that's something really kind of worth you know bearing in mind when it comes to reshaping is that it has to be a multiple so we're just going to make a little comment down here so the two numbers you input into the reshape command must multiply together to create the number of elements within the original array now that does take your head you know it takes a bit of time to get your head around but it's simply just saying you know we can't split this into so many kind of say we want to split it into two have two per element what you find is you'll end up with one left over and that's just saying you know we can't do that because we've got one left over it's kind of like if you were to divide and you end up with a remainder that's kind of how it works so i'll just put an exclamation mark there just so you know you remember that you can't reshape things um you can't reshape every single array now what i've shown you here is how you reshape in two dimensional what we can actually do is we can reshape into three dimensional as well so you kind of would guess it here we just need to add an extra argument but create a new array we'll call it one dim and we'll say np dot array and we'll just have one two three four five six okay now what i'm going to say is three dim equals one dim dot reshape let's say we want two elements inside those elements we're going to have three elements and inside that those elements we're going to have one element now this is probably going to kind of confuse you but i'm just going to show you what we what happens when we do print three dim okay so we'll run this perfect so what this has done here it has created two elements within the first kind of dimension here then within that it has created three more elements and inside that it has created one element now this does take your head you know th this is what i mean by when we start increasing the dimension size it can get incredibly confusing just because we have so many brackets and things and it, it can get you know confusing but it's just worth remembering that as you kind of go on through numpy you realize that a lot of the time reshaping is really incredible but you won't have to kind of it doesn't get quite as confusing as just simply doing things like this it's almost it becomes second nature to you and you just understand kind of oh well yeah that must be a three-dimensional array okay so again if we were to put a two in here and we run this it would come up with an error because obviously two times three times two is 12 and we only have six elements in here so you just need to remember that whatever numbers you put in here all of them multiplied together must equal the number of elements within a given array so we'll just run this again and perfect we get that i'm going to put a comment here and we'll just say this will take one two three four five six and break it into two arrays and inside those two arrays 
it will have three arrays of one element okay now again you know it does get massively confusing when you start kind of figuring out in your head how it all works but once you pick up on it, it it is incredibly easy it's just one of those things that once it clicks it clicks so that's kind of how we reshape into different dimensions again kind of the rules that apply for reshaping and also just how you find the shape of an, a given array so that is the video today i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please like subscribe and comment and don't forget to check out my social media as well i'm doing so many polls on my instagram because instagram seems to have kicked off massively i've got like 50,000 um followers at the moment so it's it's kind of gone a bit crazy so i'm posting polls on there all the time to say you know tell me what you want to see what videos you want to see so please go and follow my instagram if you do have instagram if not i'm on all the other social medias as well so please um go follow them but as i said if you enjoyed the video then please like subscribe and comment and i will see you all in the next video